Now we're going to look at how to use manometry to do pressure differences and not just atmospheric pressure. So if we look at this, this is what's called a U-tube manometer. And it's called a U-tube manometer because, well, it looks like a big U. And the way that this works and the way that we read a pressure difference in two fluids is pretty much the exact same way that we did with barometers. Except now, instead of an open end, we can have any number of different fluids and different bends in it. So what I'm going to show you now is how to calculate out a YouTube manometer. And there's really no set formulas. I'm going to show you how you create the formula because all YouTube manometers can be a little different. You can have multiple different fluids in there. You can have it open. You can have multiple bends. But as long as we remember the same principles, they're really easy to solve. And the very first thing is still always going to come down and be, we find a fluid at the same level, and we know the pressure is the same. So in this case, we have, we'll call this right here point 0.1. We'll call this point 0.2. They're at the same level. So I know the big thing is, is the pressure at point 0.1 is going to be equal to the pressure at point 0.2. All this stuff down here below the line, I don't care. This could be going into corkscrews. It could be going into the other building. It can be going down the street. Doesn't matter. All that matters is point one and point two are at the same depth. They have the same pressure. You know, we can ignore all the rest of it. We can just cut this off because it really, it, it's immaterial to what we're going to do. So now what we're going to do on each side is we're basically going to build that pressure stack up and do a pressure balance just like we did with the barometer. So let's start here at point one. Well, what's point one going to be? Well, point one is going to be the hydrostatic force of this column. Now, when you see this bulb like here, you're typically measuring all the heights and the pressures from the middle of it. That's just the way that notation works. So we have this hydrostatic column here. So you have this hydrostatic column here that's pushing down on point one. How much pressure is that? Well, it's just like from our hydrostatic equation. It's going to be the density of that times the gravity. So remember, density times gravity is just specific weight times the height of that column. So in this case, that height is going to be Za minus Z1. So you have that hydrostatic column plus you have whatever's pushing on top of it. It could be another column of fluid. It could be a pressure. Well, in this case, it's that pressure in that tank A. So that's pressure at A. So the pressure at point one is that hydrostatic column pushing down on it, plus whatever's pushing down on that hydrostatic column. So let's go over here to point two. So we've got the pressure at two. What's the pressure at two going to be? Same thing. It's going to be this hydrostatic column now pushing down. So what's the, what's the pressure of that hydrostatic column? Well, that's going to be the density of two times gravity, it gives us the specific weight, and then it's going to be the height, so Z2 minus Z1. And then we have whatever's pushing down on that column. In this case, it's just open air, so it's the pressure of atmosphere. So let's go back over here. The book uses P capital A for this side over here, and then it uses P sub A for atmosphere. I'm just going to write atmospheric pressure. Well, at that point, well, P1 is equal to P2, so I can just say those two equations are equal to each other. And that's all there is to manometry. And because we can, it doesn't matter what I'm asking you, I could ask you what's atmospheric pressure? Well, you can calculate that out from everything else. So it really doesn't matter what I ask you for. Once you set up the equation, you should be able to find whatever it is you're looking for. Let's look at another situation. And we would look at another situation. So this situation is something like what you're going to see in the thermal fluids lab. So we have a YouTube manometer here that's hooked up to a pipe. And there's some flow device that's measuring something in between. And we're trying to figure out what the pressure drop between fluid A and, uh, excuse me, the fluid at point A is and the fluid at point B. So we do the same thing, we can set up the hydrostatic equation. First thing that we do is we look, and we've got our working fluid here, this pink colored one, and I can see that 
those two points right there, exact same height. So since they're at the exact same depth, we can sit there and go, okay, there's one, there's two. I know the pressure at point one is going to equal the pressure at point two. So let's put together what is the pressure at point one. And the pressure at point one is going to be this hydrostatic column that's pushing down on point one. So density one, gravity for specific weight, times the height of that column, and that column is going to be H plus L. And then whatever's pushing down on top of that column. In this case, it's whatever the pressure at A is. Okay, and so all of that has to equal the pressure at point two. So what's the pressure at point two? Well, first we got this little pink column. Density two, gravity, times the height, H. And then we have to add to that this column here, because that column's pushing down on top of that other column. So that's plus density of one, gravity for specific weight, times L. And then the pressure at B, because that's what's pushing down on everything. And so now we've set this up, so if we know pressure at A, we can find B and all that other great stuff. And we can sit here and we can rearrange stuff a little bit, because I can take this term here, subtract it from that side. I'm going to end up, that will cancel out. And so we can simplify things a little bit. So we can go PA minus PB. So there's our pressure difference. Is going to equal GH times density of 2 minus density of 1. So just a little, <clears throat> excuse me, just a little bit of algebra to simplify that problem out. And so really it all comes down to what do you need to do and how are you going to calculate it? So all of these problems, it's going to be the same thing. Identify where the fluids are at the same depth so you know something about them that you know that the same pressure. And then from there, set up your equation. And then just figure out what you need to solve and pull it out of that equation.